Have you ever looked at a website and thought to yourself, man, I wish I had that feature on my website. For example, if you go to google.com and you type something in and then you get this really nice autocompletes, this array of suggestions that are very accurate most of the time and then make it easy for you because you don't have to type the rest of the word or sentence. Well, in this video, I'll show you how to pull all this data that you would normally get as a user directly in your Node.js API. This is done through a process called web scraping, where you essentially open a browser on a server and navigate a website, just like a normal user would, except you're doing it programmatically. So a bot navigates the website, gets the data it needs, and then sends it to your API. And it obviously doesn't have to be from google.com, it can be from any other website, as long as you're complying with their terms of service. Now, some websites don't allow bots to visit their sites. It's against their terms of service, and you can basically get sued if you don't follow the rules. Other websites have security measures to prevent bots. For example, whenever you see a CAPTCHA where you have to verify that you're a human by selecting all these buses in the picture or something similar to that, one of the reasons that's there is to prevent APIs from using bots on their websites. Anyway, that's enough for the intro. Let's get started and try to do some web scraping on Google. Here I am in VS Code. I've got Node.js installed on my PC and I created a new folder. I'm gonna run npm init dash dash yes to create a package.json file. Then I'll run npm install puppeteer. This is the library that I'll be using to open a browser in Node and navigate a website. I'll create a script to start the app and also set the type of the package to be module. I'll create the index.js file in the source directory. And this is where I will write an async function called get Google suggestions. It will have a query parameter, which will be the search text that we type in Google. First, let's import Puppeteer. Let's launch the browser. And in the launch settings, we're going to pass two options. The first one is headless which is gonna be false at first. This makes it so that the browser isn't working in the background and we can actually see what's going on. And the second option is args, where we will set the language to be English. Now, this is hard coded for now, but if you want, the language code can potentially be another parameter for your function. Next, let's open a new page and go to google.com. Now, before we continue, let's open the browser and see what we actually want to get. We want the bot to go to Google and then select the search box. Type the search query. And then we want to get all these suggestions that appear below the search box. Let's right click on one of them and click inspect elements. We can see that the list of suggestions is this UL element. And inside, there are these li elements, which represents every suggestion individually. So we're going to select these li elements and then target the span element inside it, which is where the actual text is located. Normally, I wouldn't select elements by their tag name. I would use their ID or class name. But as you can see, Google has these random class names, which are different every time you open the page. I assume they're using some kind of CSS preprocessor, which is another tactic to discourage using bots. Anyway, let's go back to the code and do everything we just did step by step. We're currently on the Google homepage, and now I want to select the search box. So let's just click on the only input element on the page. Again, if you're scraping another website, try using class names or IDs for the selector. Next, let's take the search query and type it on the keyboard. I'm also going to use a delay so that it's easier to see how the bot types the letters. Then, in order to get the suggestions, we need to get access to the browser context and to the document object to be more specific. To do that, let's use the page.evaluate function. 
then we simply query selector all the li span elements on the page. The list element will target all the suggestions individually and the span will target the actual text of the suggestion. In case there are no suggestions, let's return an empty array. Otherwise, let's create an array from these result elements. And let's also get the actual text content because that's the only thing we're interested in. Finally, let's return the result array. Let's test this function for some random search query and then show the results in the console. If we run npm start in the terminal, we can see that the Chrome browser opens up, selects the search box and starts typing. And if we go back to our terminal now, we can see the list of search results shown there. That's pretty much the gist of it. Now, if we take a closer look at the results, we can see some things that shouldn't be there. For example, it says sitcom, which is a description of one of the other suggestions, a TV show. We definitely don't want that. There are even some duplicates, some empty results, etc. Let's create a function called filter results and make sure that these suggestions are cleaned up before we return them. The function will take two arguments, the search query and the result array. Now, we only want to keep suggestions that actually contain the search query at the start of the string. So if a result is an empty string or if it's a description of another suggestion, we want to remove those. In order to do that, let's create a regular expression that matches the query and is also case insensitive. And then let's filter the results to get only the ones that match the regex. Lastly, let's remove duplicates from this array by converting it to a set and then switching it back to an array. If we go back to the get Google suggestions function at the bottom, instead of returning results, let's now return the filtered version instead. Let's also close the browser before we return the results. Run the app one more time. And there it is. Now we have a much cleaner version of the results and this is what we're actually looking for. And that's pretty much all you need to know on web scraping using Puppeteer. This is a simple example and I encourage you to expand it using other parameters like language, number of results and things like that. Now you might ask yourself, what's the point of web scraping? Why would you need any data from the internet when you can just get it yourself using the browser? What are the use cases for this? Well, there's a lot of examples. There's a lot of paid APIs out there that retrieve data by web scraping. You can use Puppeteer to go to a weather website, get their weather data, and then offer that data in your API. You can maybe go to a crypto price tracking website, get their data, perform some calculations, and then offer your estimate about cryptocurrencies. You can maybe go to a forum website, get the most popular post of the week, and then display it on your page. There's a lot of possibilities and there's a lot of power in web scraping, and it's up to you to decide how you're going to use it. However, there are some drawbacks to web scraping too. It's not all perfect and it obviously has downsides to it. Before scraping some content from a website, the first big question you need to ask yourself is, is it legal to do this? There are some websites that are very clearly against web scraping unless you have permission to do so. For example, Twitter forbids web scraping on their websites. So always make sure that your actions are in line with the website's terms of service before you publish your API. The next drawback of web scraping is how slow it is. For my example that I showed earlier, I had to set a delay for keyboard typing in the Google search bar. When I tried to remove it, I couldn't properly evaluate the page. And by the way, if anybody knows how to fix this, please let me know in the comments what I'm doing wrong. Anyway, if you look at any modern API, they usually all respond within 200 milliseconds or less. Anything higher than that is considered to be very slow. And besides that, whenever you're scraping, you're always going to be relying on third-party websites. If that website is down that day, your API is also not going to work. 
So even though web scraping is a very powerful process, it does have some drawbacks to it, which you need to consider for your specific use case. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.